Hello Wanderers, welcome back to our Crusader Kings 3 roleplay series following Titus of House Peak. And as you can see, we are still in the midst of this war that has been started by Aegon Blackfire. Indeed, another Blackfire pretender has landed here in the Vale, claiming the throne. And he is starting to take some land in the Vale and then... Well, presumably he's going to march out of it and confront King Aegon the Sixth directly. Now, I left the question of who should we side with in this war up to the chat, and there was some. It felt relatively even uh, of people who wanted to side with the Blackfires, and I think that was largely because you know that's a pretty interesting option. One, the House Peak is traditionally a Blackfire supporter. Now, what does that mean? I mean, it it really just means that in the first two Blackfire rebellions, House Peak was essentially one of the leading forces in that Lord Gorman Peak was a good friend of the first Blackfire pretender. I believe it was Damon. Uh, Damon or Daron? I think it was Damon. And... He was a great supporter of him and then his son in those first two rebellions. But it didn't really go well for House Peak. In fact, supporting the Blackfires was directly what caused House Peak to lose the castle of Dunstanbury and the castle of Whitegrove. That was the, their role in that. And when the rebellion was put down was exactly what caused us to lose those two castles. But, you know, we the House did support them and was their greatest supporter in those in those first two rebellions. Now, there's also just the interesting factor of, you know, our son, Urthon, has super close ties with the uh, king, King Aegon here. And it would be really cool, you know, if the father's siding with the Blackfires and the son is siding with King Aegon here. That just makes for a really interesting story. So I can definitely see the point of the people who want us to side with the Blackfires. But on the other hand, I think it's hard to argue that our character, Lord Titus here, would be far more inclined to side with King Aegon VI for a variety of reasons. One, we put in a lot of effort and we spent a lot of our years putting Aegon on the throne, and that effort was rewarded. We got the Pale March, and we, you know, we got ourselves into a very pre prestigious position with the new Lords of the Reach, House Hightower, and we've been using that. You know, we have this hook on Baylor now, which we can use uh, for a variety of reasons, uh, or a variety of uses, I should say. And, you know, that is... We don't want to just throw that away. There's also the factor of our son. You know, he is very close with the king. He would obviously be urging us to support the king. So there's a lot There's a lot of reasons going along with that. And Titus is the type of man who, you know, he's ambitious. He's deceitful and he's temperate. So he doesn't, you know, necessarily... He's not going to jump into something... That seems like a losing cause. And King Aegon's invasion, if, you know, it, this would be a much different story if King Aegon had had some, a couple more strong supporters. I mean, the fact that the Manderleys are with him is a knock against him, but, you know, Shireen obviously joining him, but she doesn't even control the majority of the Stormlands at this point. Most of the Stormlords are not siding with Shireen, so she doesn't even have all of the power of, of those lands. And then the only others are just like a few small lords like Darkdell, I believe, um, Brimstone. Uh, some there's some Dornish lords that don't you know don't seem to favor the Martells right now. But really, it's the, he doesn't have a lot of support here. You know, if the Vale had joined him, maybe if the Riverlands had joined him, or if the North had joined him, that'd be a different story. Like if if this was an even fight then we might have reason to go against them because let's face it, King Aegon here is turning out to be a pretty 
cruel and terrible king. I mean, he's callous, he's fickle, he's gluttonous. And that, you know, is is not a very good, those are not a good collection of traits for a king. Not only that, but look, I mean, he he killed Princess Marcella or the silent sister, Marcella the Fair. You know, she was a silent sister. She was a religious figure. That was like the, Doran Martell arranged that, you know, at, instead of having her executed. But then he goes and takes her and executes her anyways, you know, as a threat to the throne. That probably didn't look too good. And then not only that, but he also has executed Aemon Baratheon, which is the son of uh, Renly here. Renly died from his wounds. Uh, he had a son but Aegon executed him as well. I'm wondering if that was um, part of Aegon uh, when he defeated, um, what's his name, Stannis here. I wonder if that is what, you know, he brought Aemon or, yeah, Aemon to his court. And then once the war started, had him executed. Uh, but either way, I mean, that's... You know, he killed he killed a, a kid here, you know, five years old. That's not that's not good. Not to mention, you know, executing Lord of Krakal. I mean, some some of these were legit rebels, you know, Tywin, Stannis, uh, Krakal. You know, some of these people were rebels. But like Marcella, she, you know, that I don't know if we can call that a just execution. Uh, Amon, probably not as well. Um, so Aegon is not a good king. There's a lot of reasons to want to act against him, but in this case, I don't think it makes sense for our character, Titus, to do so because it would just, it would be counterintuitive and it would be disadvantageous to us to do so. And we're going to try to do things that are going to help our goal. And our goal is still get White Grove back. You know, we have to get these three castles. We've got one or two of our three. We need to get the third one. And then after that, we need to use our power and influence to position ourselves as high up in the reach as we can. And potentially, you know, further than that, you know, there's going to be a lot of opportunities. The fact that after this, you know, what's going to happen in the Stormlands? Who knows? Somebody did point out it would be pretty cool if House Peak could become Lords of the Stormlands at some point. So we'll see if we can pull something like that off. It might be it might be a little tricky, but. I think everything is leaning towards us joining Aegon here. So we are going to commit our forces. We're going to join the Loyalists. Uh, we have a sworn fealty back to Lord Paramount Baylor. I mean, we never, I don't think we ever lost that uh, fealty or anything like that. But uh, so yeah, that is, that is our decision. Now we do need to use that hook and... We'll be able to use it for a couple different things. So one thing I want to do, this won't be the first thing, but I would like to arrange a marriage between Runcel here and our daughter Sabara. He won't accept at this point, but we should be able to get that. If we use the hook, we can definitely get it, but I want to save the hook for now. Um, but I want to arrange this marriage. We're not going to do the matrilineal one. Like I said, it doesn't really make sense in Game of Thrones. There's no way we can really justify that within the context of, you know, how Westeros works. Um, but even just getting the marriage there is still going to be useful to us because, you know, this is the nephew of the king. So pretty, you know, he's pretty high up there. Um, but what we really want to do first is use our, and we can, we can use this hook multiple times. So we can get him to declare us the region. We can get him to get that marriage, but first we're going to get him to modify our vassal contract. So what I want to do, we're obviously going to need the war sanction declared. So we could use the hook and get this right now, but I also want to get us to be a march, which is going to be very advantageous. You guys know all the bon benefits from this. Levy size increase, garrison size increase, reinforcement rate, army gold maintenance goes way down, controlled territory defender advantage goes up. Pretty good. Uh, we could dedicate some more feudal levies to it, and probably that's what we're going to do. Really, it only adds a couple extra levies to it, total levies, 
3,115. And then if, you know, it's not going to make a big difference. I'd rather do that. We need the money. So uh, we'll, we'll offer more levies in exchange for this. And then we'll use our hook because we know that he's a witch. So he doesn't really have a lot of choice there. So there we go. We've modified our vassal contract. To my vassal, circumstances have made it necessary for me to make the following alterations to my contract. I trust that you'll find these fair. Uh, yes, these uh, the necessity of us, you know, telling you that we're going to oust you as a witch if you don't uh, do what we say. So, Baylor, he's still, you know, he doesn't actually hate us. Oh, we were disloyal to him during the war because we didn't sign on right away. Yeah. Oh, well. Uh, we don't really need him to like us. We just need him to do what we tell him to do. So there we go. And look at that. Boom. Huge increase to the amount of money right now because our levies are much cheaper. Or our army is much cheaper now to maintain. So I guess we will just continue to do some sieges. I, you know, we still got this the war within the reach here, the Liberty War. I don't really care how this one goes, honestly. It doesn't really affect us at this point now. So, and frankly, if he sieges down Old Town and, you know, I don't know, like it's a few of the high towers die, eh, nothing, there's nothing too, too bad about that for us, frankly. And really, it's just weakening the high towers, and the high towers being weak just means that we have more influence. Now, one thing I would like to do is we should probably help out with the the war going on here. And, you know, our small amount of troops is probably not going to make much difference, but maybe we can win over the... Maybe we can win over the king by, you know, doing him a solid, by helping him out. And how could we help him out? Well, perhaps we could help him out by murdering Shireen Baratheon, who is, as you will see, his rival... So if we can murder Shireen, that will give us some pretty... Oh, 23 agents. We all... This is how many... Did they all just immediately sign up? Oh, I totally... I forgot to point this out, and this is super interesting. So Melisandre... So she's a character, obviously, in the game as well. I mean, you all know Melisandre from the books um, and the show. She had a daughter. Well, who's her daughter with? Stannis Baratheon, yeah. Stannis and Melisandre had a bastard daughter. Very fascinating. Well, her bastard daughter was unfortunately killed. Who was she killed by? Executed by Baylor Bright Smile. Baylor Bright Smile. Hmm. Not so honorable after all, are you? Executing a two-year-old girl? I mean, she was a hostage, you know, she was from the the Baratheon house, but executing a child, a bastard child, not a good look, Baylor. You know, a bright smile or a bloody smile. I don't know. Maybe the maybe there's gonna be a new nickname going on behind his back. But yeah, I mean, the Baratheon house doesn't have much left. Shireen is pregnant. Uh, but yeah, she is the last of her line. If she dies, the house goes to. Lord Allen uh, Estermont here, and that's because Lord Allen's grandmother is from Baratheon. So he's actually the next closest in line. And this guy has the great pox. So yeah, probably not uh, probably not doing too well. I don't know who his heir is here. Uh, Durham Estermont. Yeah, now we're starting to go pretty far back. I don't even know if this person would be in line for the Stormlands. Uh, can we see... That Lord Willis of the Reach? What? Willis is the act is the third in line for the Stormlands. And that's because Lord Willis is. Hmm. Lord Willis, does he have a great grandmother? Like where is where is his claim to the reach coming from? Must be from from his high tower family. I am not sure, man. This must go far back. Is the the claim on the reach must go very far back for Willis Tyrell to be the the third in line for the reach here. 
Very interesting. <laughs> Tyrells. So the Tyrells could potentially go from being ousted from the Reach to the new Lords of the Stormlands. That would be cool and really fascinating. Uh, we'll see if it happens. I mean, this scheme on Shireen is going to take 12 months. Um, we don't really need to get anybody else in here. I don't think we can even make it go any faster than it already is. I, I mean, maybe events, but yeah. So <laughs> very curious. A lot of interesting things going on, that's for sure. Uh, but yeah, we're pulling our schemes. We are doing, you know, everything we can to to essentially put ourselves in the best position that we possible can. Oh, we can demand a hostage from Lord Willis. I think that we will. Yeah, well, let's demand a hostage from Lord Willis. Could be helpful. Uh, our daughters need somebody to uh, teach them. We'll just get our wife to do it. It's not too big of a deal there. There we go. So Dana. Dana is going to come to come to Starpike here. And uh, yeah, there we go. So we could potentially even... No, we can't arrange a marriage or anything like that. For her, but you know she's in our court, so well, you know we're we're playing the Game of Thrones here. You know Tyrells potentially inherit the Reach. We have his daughter as a hostage. All sorts of fascinating, <gasps> yeah, all sorts of fascinating things going on. I thought that they had just taken some of our land. That was uh, rightfully Pale March, but no, it's just just nearby. So yeah, let's let time run a little bit. We should probably just keep a a little bit of an eye on our army, but. Really, I think we're pretty safe. Even if they attack us, I feel like Carrick. Ah, I feel like you could probably beat this army anyways. I mean, look at that. It would be an even fight. But, uh, eh, that is, a, I mean, it's a little concerning. A little cheeky to get that close to him? Probably, especially when they're just going to finish his CG. Oh, no, wait, this is White Grove's army. They're not even, they don't even want to attack us. So we don't have to worry about that. So we're just going to go and siege down uh, the other castle here inside her crossing. And we'll see how this all plays out. So, you know, it's in, we're, we're playing an interesting game here. Oh, and our wife is pregnant once more. We're playing an interesting game because we're helping the Tyrell, or that we're helping the High Towers, but we're also blackmailing Baylor. So we're helping him, but we're blackmailing him. And we are assisting Aegon here by pulling off some schemes, pulling off some plots on his enemies. So we're actually doing quite a bit to put ourselves in a very good position here. And, you know, house? Oh, are we? Yeah, okay, so we are gonna get in a fight. Can we get out of here in time? Doesn't look like it, so, all right. Well, Carrick, you're gonna have to, uh, uh, probably pull pull the army back. I don't think we need to. I don't think we need to do this fight here. So if we can retreat, all the better. Hopefully, Carrick doesn't get captured here, or or slain. That would be that'd be a bad. Yeah. All right. So it looks like we're gonna be able to retreat here. Um. So yeah, we we lost that battle, but. Uh, we were we were playing it pretty risky by by trying to take that with an enemy army there anyways. Enemy ally joins the war. Hmm. Enemies left the war. Yeah, nothing too majorly concerning there. Our scheme against oh Shireen had a daughter and names that names her after herself. Uh I mean you know. Who knows what who knows what could happen? I just I was just knocking Baylor for doing it, but we don't have a name like Bright Smile, you know. We we're well known to not really be the best of, of guys, so we're not as sociopathic as our son is. He's an evil antagonist. But we are, you know, we're still not that good ourselves. Guilt and shame have been plaguing me. I think we're just probably going to resist the impulses. We'll tank we'll tank the stress for now. 
Bring our army back here. Oh, Baylor's moving his army. Has he lost Hightower yet? The man in charge of cleaning the clothes of Lady Paramount Shireen's guard is brought to me. No one will notice him tampering with their clothes, and if something distracting for the guards could be planted, what would you have of me, my lord? I want you to grind those rose hips are really fine. 50 coins. We could speed this up. Yeah, let's uh let's do that. Speed it up a little bit here. Yeah, okay. High tower's about to fall. So, oh, when we had some more people just people are just volunteering to join the scheme. It's probably because she is a faith of Rolore here, so nobody really likes her. So, yeah, then this zero year old this brand newborn child here ah my son was made a knight so he was knighted by the king you know which is which is good i mean he's a horrible person but you know he is and he is ambitious he's probably gonna do a pretty good job carrying on the peak name so looks like high tower still got a little bit left we'll speed up time a bit more here and let's see how this all all goes down. Aha, there we go. Should be able to move back in now. Ah, I don't want to. I don't want to really take attrition for no reason though. Yeah, it looks like he's doing a fine job uh, sieging that down. Why would we even bother wasting our troops? We're gonna need our troops. So let's probably just uh, let's disband our army once we get a chance here. And we'll we'll deal with that. Don't think we need to worry too much about this battle. Yeah, nothing nothing major happened there. But what is this? Invitation to Lord Willis's hunt. Ah, huh. I suppose we could join the hunt while this. I mean, the, there's a war going on, but we could probably join the hunt. Uh, let's get uh this guy. Put him in charge of that. This is, I mean, hunts are probably a potentially a very good place to do some plotting and, and planning here, so. There we go. Soon the hunt shall begin. What are we going to do for our... Hmm, do we do recreation, murder? Do we try to murder somebody here? Is there anybody useful to murder... I don't know if there is. I don't see anybody here that we really have any particular reason to want to murder. Befriend? Hmm. Could it be good to get Willis on our side, even though, you know, Hightower, Tyrell has lost a lot of power. If, you know, if we can get the Hightowers back, if we can have them on our side, it just gives us an extra option. They still have a lot of influence in the Reach. They ruled the reach for 300 years. There's a lot of people still loyal to have side, uh, Tyrell. So if we can get Willis on our side, that just is, is just going to be advantageous to us. So, uh, yeah, scheme on Shireen, almost done. Question is, do we murder? Well, I mean, if we can get Willis as our friend, maybe we do murder Shireen's daughter. Good question. My agents have scheduled a journey for Lady Paramount Shireen, which will take them through Dark Woods. All that is missing is a band of thugs that will tragically slay her in a highway robbery gone wrong. I can already imagine her blood seeping into the Dark Soul. I imagine this is basically like a, a special forces, <laughs> you know, sending our best uh, best men here to go and, and deal with Shireen on behalf of the king. So, yeah, let us let us attempt to do so. Not interested. Thanks to my brilliant plan and my hired thugs, Lady Paramount Shireen is finally dead. As the travel party stopped to camp for the evening, bandits poured out from among the trees, calling for blood and gold. The soldiers fought back, but thankfully it was not enough. Lady Paramount Shireen was tragically slain in the melee. Conveniently, most of the bandits were also slain in the fighting. Okay, so maybe we just hired some bandits. But there we go. Lady, Lady Paramount Shireen is dead, and now this young girl is in charge. Oh, actually, now if she dies, then it goes to her father, House Selmy. Interesting. 
Interesting. I think we need to leave her on then, because that's the weaker ruler of the Stormlands. And the weaker ruler in the Stormlands is more advantageous to us. Let's see. To tame a, and fly a falcon is to truly live. Hmm. Uh, yeah, let's go with that option. Willis is rakish. Hmm, interesting. Ah, uh, he doesn't... Wait, they don't seem to have made an impact on him? Ah, we feel foolish. Yeah, okay, so he didn't like our attempt to win him over there. Eh, perhaps understandable. I don't think we need... Yeah, let's disband our army. I'm not really too concerned with, uh, with that right now. And the high tower did indeed fall. His wife was imprisoned. Did he? Oh, and his son Runcel is also imprisoned. Huh. Oh no, imprisoned by Garth Grayseal. Some of the, some of the Tyrell lords, some of the other Tyrells, Garth Grayseal, um, have actually went it. He act, he's, he's going against his brother, so that leads to some pretty. I mean, it's just pure chaos, frankly. Let's face it. It's just chaos here. Um, We should probably switch. The befriend scheme doesn't seem to be working, so let's at least try to uh, reduce some stress here. Add a daughter. We'll name her Myrina. That seems fine. Oh, but she's sick. Oh, no. Hopefully she'll survive. We have a lot of children already, as it is. My falcon attempts to get its prey, but it does not. An unsuccessful hunt, so we didn't really get anything from that, but, you know, it's it's not so bad. Do we go and finish off? You know what, we might as well, actually, you know, being able to get to fabricate hooks could actually be useful here, so uh, we'll get that. Let's leave this adventure behind for now. So we do lose a little bit of stress anyways. What do we have here? I propose a betrothal between my sister, Fruella Virwell, and your son, Carrick Peak. Aren't you... No, you're a, you're a traitor to the crown. No. How's <laughs> Virwell? You are going up against our rightful King Aegon here, so... Yeah, we will not be siding with you. Oh, we need to do the marriage. Grand wedding. Did we uh did we lose prestige for that? I wasn't even paying attention, but I mean, we don't need to do the grand wedding it seems like and now, so I might not have been paying attention there, so Hopefully we didn't lose a uh, another. Yeah, I think we're okay. I didn't see any big pop up or anything. Um, but in any case, let us. Yeah, I mean, let's just get them married. If it doesn't say we need to do the grand wedding, then then we might as well not. So there we go. He's probably not happy that his daughter is marrying the person who's blackmailing him, but I think that that. Perfectly, perfectly fine. This war's not going so well in the reach here, and, uh, you know, that is also perfectly fine. So really, as was said in Game of Thrones, chaos is a ladder, and frankly, things are pretty damn chaotic right now. And we are, we are using that, you know. Aegon is definitely going to be pleased that we got rid of Shireen for him. And, you know, now all we need to do is solidify our position. Once this war in the Reach is done, we can go and take our third castle. We can go and take any rightful lands that belongs to us because Cockles went Orchard Way. Baylor is not going to care. And he even if he did, he couldn't stop us if we go and take lands from them because they're traitors to him. So really, we are in basically the best position possible here. And we are going to use that to our advantage in the next episode. Until then, thank you for watching.